Since the 9-11 attacks, the temptation to engage in profiling for security reasons is natural and understandable, but it is deeply flawed. I'm going to give you two reasons why I think not only would it be ineffective, but it would actually help the terrorist. Let's we'll start with reason number one, the short-term reason. The terrorists are smart, they are desperate, and they are resourceful. They are far outgunned, they're used to being outgunned, and the way they compensate for that is they try to be three steps ahead of us. Now, if we were to engage in ethnic profiling, if we were to start targeting people who look Muslim, imagine what it would lead to. I've had so many people tell me this. They said, well, you know, if you see the white granny, she's not a problem, but, you know, you see that Arab-looking guy wearing the turban, he's the guy you want to profile. Now, can any of you tell me what's wrong with that? Any of you who have some knowledge of the cultures in that part of the world? Little Jeopardy quiz for you. Do, 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 do. Okay, here's the answer. Muslims don't wear turbans. Sikhs wear turbans. Why on earth would we want to target Sikhs? This is the problem with profiling. It will be horribly inaccurate, and the terrorist will know how to get around it. Consider a very recent terrorist attack in Syria by an American jihadist. Now, if you're not looking at the screen right now, I want you to look at it. Take a look at the screen. Look at the picture I'm putting up. Look at this guy. This guy here, what does he look like to you? He looks like a good old boy. Looks like the average American. Looks like the kind of guy I grew up with. He's from Florida, as I understand. That's my home state. You really think that your profiling is going to catch this guy? Now, let's look at another picture of him. Look at this. I don't know about you, but looking at this, I think he looks like a Mennonite. But he's not a Mennonite. He converted to Islam, and he converted to the most dangerous kind of Islam. This is how they'll get us. If we profile, they'll know we're profiling. And they're not going to send some guy who looks like Lawrence of Arabia eating a falafel after us. They're going to send this good old boy after us. They're going to send this guy scarfing down a cheeseburger after us. They want him to look like just, just like us so we don't suspect it. The terrorists are not idiots and we're not going to beat them by outgunning them because we already have them outgunned. We're going to have to beat them by finding a way to be smarter than they are. And if we profile, they will be smarter than us. So. By profiling, I think all we're really doing is actually making ourselves more vulnerable to the terrorists because we're telling them what to expect. Now, let me go into my number two reason why I think this will actually help them. This will help them more in the long run. Consider this, if you will. You're a Islamic female growing up in Saudi Arabia. You are a Muslim. You love Allah. You go to mosque. You don't eat pork, etc. But you believe that Islam is all about peace. You also see nothing wrong with driving, but Saudi Arabian law says you can't drive. You don't like the Saudi government because it's way too restrictive, and you just want to practice your religion in peace. So you've got the Saudi government on the one hand telling you you can't drive, and on the other hand you've got Al-Qaeda, who hates the Saudi government, telling you you should go blow something up. You want to get away from all that, so you move to America. You find a way, you come here, you settle, you get married, you have children. You raise, you raise them to be Islamic, but you know also to be proud Americans. Yes, you can be both. So you raise them that way, but these children grew up being profiled. They grew up with people being suspicious of them. They grew up with people making prejudiced remarks towards them. It builds resentment inside them. These moderate Muslims become increasingly radicalized because of the hatred. And sooner or later, they hear this radical cleric in one of those mosques preaching about jihad. They decide to go to one of those countries, and they're turned on by the whole idea. They're filled with that sense of desperation, and they believe that 72 virgins will be waiting for them if they make martyrs of themselves. In other words, they strap a bomb and they go kill some people. That's how it will help the terrorist in the long run. If we build resentment that way towards the Islamic community, it only makes them worse. We need to, as George Bush said and as President Obama has said, we need to recognize peaceful Muslims and we need to work with them. 
They are our friends. Um, probably one of the greatest allies we have in that part of the world is Morocco, a predominantly Islamic country. Those are the kind of people we need to work with. So, in conclusion, aside from the ethical problems with this kind of ethnic profiling, it is also not only ineffective, but it will hurt us more than it will help us. I think most people who advocate profiling are probably well-intended. They're probably just scared, and they think this is what we have to do, you know, until things get safer. But I hope my points I have made have shown you how it's actually not pragmatic. Unfortunately, there is also a minority for whom racial profiling in reality is just their way of spreading their hate. There are certainly people who just despise Muslims with a passion, and this was the perfect opportunity for them to spread their hatred. Those people are part of the problem, and I don't see why they are any better than the terrorists who hate us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.